December, commonly known as the worst month of the year for solar generation, the sun is at its lowest point of the year, the daylight hours are as short as they can be. Both 2023 and 24 had December months to forget, but 2025 has been a great year for solar. Will December round the year off in style? Stick with me for all the analysis. I'm based in the UK, specifically in the West Midlands, just outside the city of Coventry. As you can see from the approximate coordinates, the UK is a long way into the Northern Hemisphere, meaning seasonal variation is significant. I'm fortunate enough to have a sizeable system consisting of 32 panels across various orientations. That comprises of 16 south, 5 east, 5 west and 6 north facing. This makes just over 14 kilowatts of total capacity or 12.6 after inverter limitations. The estimated output of the entire system is around 10,700 kilowatt hours. The system wasn't always this size, it's been built up over time in three phases. Here is a breakdown of each element. Phase one occupies the south facing side of the roof. It's just over five kilowatts peak and it was installed back in October 2023. It consists of 12 SunPower Maxion 3 430 watt panels, paired with Solar Edge optimizers and a 5 kW Solar Edge inverter. Phase 2 is formed on the east and west aspects of the roof. It's 4.4 kW peak, it was installed back in October 2024 and consists of 10 REA Fusion 2 440 watt panels, 5 on the east and 5 on the west. Each one is paired with an N Phase IQ8 HC microinverter. The final phase of the system occupies the garage and north side of the house. It was activated in May 2025 and consists of 10 REA Fusion 2 450 watt panels. There is 4 on the south side of the garage, 4 on the north side of the garage and 2 on the north side of the house. These also have N Phase IQ8 HC microinverters. December is never going to generate huge numbers, but the south facing array produced 156 kilowatt hours of energy. Although there were highs and lows, with a variety of weather on show, there were at least six really solid days of sunshine, along with many mixed days, and there were some truly awful days too, but overall that's a great result, one I'm really pleased with. And here's why. It's a major improvement on previous years. 2023's generation was a measly 78 kilowatt hours, and 2024's was not much better at 89.3. This year saw a 75% uplift on those numbers, a great way to sign off the year in style. It wasn't such a good month for my east and west facing array at just 358 kilowatt hours. As the data shows, there are very few areas left unshaded at this time of year, meaning most of the generation came from three of the east facing panels. As such, the output was only 56% of their members total, and it's a similar story for my garage and north facing panels, with a result of 47.3 kilowatt hours, that's 55% of their members total, with the bulk of the generation unsurprisingly coming from the south facing garage panels. But even these are now severely shaded, with the upper panels benefiting from maybe an hour or just over that, maybe two hours if you're lucky, of daily direct sunlight this month. In terms of proportion, this means two thirds came from the south array. At this time of year, the height and orientation is everything to avoid that inevitable shading. The garage and north phase made up 20% and the east and west phase was the weakest at 15%. If you have been enjoying this so far, please give me a like to help promote my content to others who may find it useful. Many thanks. The highest generation day for the south array was 14.7 on December the 3rd. It was a close run thing between that and the second, which came in at 14.3 kilowatt hours. The third had a peak of 3.14 kilowatts due to the low height of the sun ultimately producing 78% of November's best throughout the day. In contrast, the highest generating day for the East and West Array was just 1.87 kilowatt hours. This goes to show how little direct sunlight actually reaches these panels throughout December. Interestingly though, it was achieved on the second, not the third on this particular aspect. The 1.87 kilowatt hours output was 43% of November's best. The highest generation for the garage and north array was 3.1 on the 2nd of December, which was 49% of November's best. The south panels proved to be pivotal as they outgenerated the north panels on average by a factor of 7 to 1 on this particular day. 
I said we had some mixed weather this month, and this is a prime example. On the 18th of December, which happens to be just three days prior to the winter solstice, the generation for the south-facing aspect was just 87 watt-hours for the day. This is one of the lowest values I've ever seen from it. It had a peak of just 40 watts, and it even had a spell just after midday where it was too dark to generate anything at all. Overall, the daily total was just 16% of November's weakest day. Despite the 18th clearly being an awful day, the east and west and garage and north facing aspects fared a little better at 114 and 164 watt hours respectively. This created a total of 365 watt hours with all the generation combined. The fact that these outscored the south array on this particular day does go to show that these are well set up for lower light conditions. How was your December's output? Was it what you were expecting? And which were your highest and lowest days of generation? I'd love to hear from you, so let me know in the comments. The 156 kilowatt hours generated this month was massively above the PV watts target of 99, and the first time in three Decembers it's been above the installer target too. This rounds off the year at exactly 5,800 kilowatt hours for the year, rounding off an incredible 2025. Just how good was 2025? That's something I'm looking to explore a little more in a future video. The east and west aspects very narrowly beat their PV watts targets, up 3.8 kilowatt hours for the month. At 3,365 kilowatt hours, it was great to see this aspect also outscored the annual installer and PV watts targets by a decent margin. The garage and north system also outscored its PV watts targets by 9.3 kilowatt hours keeping its 100% record against PV watts targets. Although it missed out on January to April's generation being a new install this year, it was only around 300 units short of its annual targets, which is pretty incredible. The combined generation for all 32 panels for the month of December was 239.1 kilowatt hours. Interestingly enough, it's nearly identical to where we started the year. January in 2025 also had an output of 239. If your system didn't produce what you were hoping for this month, here is something to consider. December is the toughest month on solar generation. We have now passed the winter solstice, which means with every day that passes until June the 21st, there is greater potential for solar generation. So although the next couple of months might seem tough, things will only improve from here. With that, I want to wish you a very, very happy new year. And then let's take a look at the financials. For import, we weren't far off one megawatt hour imported, which might be our highest so far. It's our first winter with a heat pump, and we covered a lot of mileage too. Naturally, the export was low at just 71.7 kilowatt hours, which resulted in a net grid usage of 890.7 kilowatt hours imported. That might not cost as much as you would think, though. Being on Octopus Intelligent Go, I'm utilizing a 7 pence off peak rate. The Powerwalls have calculated that I have saved £111 this month. It's one of the smallest values we're likely to see, but significant regardless. This month I'm really proud of keeping my peak import down to just one unit across the entire month. This is well within my target of 1%, and honestly, I didn't think it would be possible during the winter months. It would appear I've identified a trend which makes this possible. More on that in a future video. And if you are thinking it's the trick to get more off-peak hours on Intelligent Go, it's not that. So be sure to subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll show you what I know. Off-peak usage was just over £67, and the standing charge was just over £15. Export was £10.76, making the total bill for December £72.19. Of course, that covers two electric vehicles, heating via my Cozy 6 heat pump, all the cooking and general household usage. Thanks very much for watching, and to those who have regularly watched, liked, and commented on this series throughout the year, a huge thank you for your support. Warmest wishes to you in 2026, where I hope to see you for more solar and renewable energy content throughout the year. All the best. Bye-bye.